What's up guys, David here, one, two, and two, and it's list day. Ah yes, list day, and today we're gonna be doing the same thing we do every year, and that is the top 10 best and the top 10 worst cards of uh, whatever year it just was. And oh boy, was that a year. The fun thing about the 2020 Yu-Gi-Oh season is uh, there really wasn't one. The next 10 cards, the top 10 best cards of the year, are uh, the top 10 cards that I think Probably would have been meta-defining. Maybe, if we had a meta. But Dave, we had remote duels! Well, Mr. Weird Potato Hand Thing. Wait a sec. Angry Commenter. But Dave, we had remote duels! This don't count and you know it, you stupid potato. Fuck you! <laughs> I'm doing this for now on. So the next 10 cards are the cards that I would assume would have been good had we actually been able to play real Yu-Gi-Oh! So without further ado, the top 10 cards of 2020, question mark. Number 10, Forbidden Droplet. Forbidden Droplet is one hell of a quick play spell card. Forbidden donut. Send any amount of cards from your hand or your field to the graveyard. Choose that many effect monsters your opponent controls. Until the end of the turn, their attacks are cut in half and their effects are negated. Oh man, it's like the world's worst uh uh dark ruler no more. <laughs> but but there there is a there there is a, a, a fun factor to it. In response to this card's activation, your opponent cannot use cards that are the same type as the cards you sent to activate it. Spell trap and monster. So if you send a little bit of everything, your opponent just pretty much has to watch you do this. They can't even judge in it. Not only that, but by not just simply negating their effects, but having their attack power, we can actually like dual links up in this bitch, wall of disruption, and then just crash all your stuff into their weak monsters and hit up from oh, quite a bit of damage, frankly. Especially because like you can do this during an end phase and things like that. So there's like tons of weird things you can do simply because it's a quick play spell card means you can really probably cheese your opponent pretty good. Plus, this thing is searchable. Well, I mean, kinda. It, in the right deck. But Dave, anyone can play that stupid Fallen Maiden thing! Sh no, they wouldn't, you- <laughs> I'm gonna have way too much fun with this for the rest of the video. Number nine! Uh, uh, Triple T, baby! Triple Tactics Talents! Just a one hell of a card because it's actually three cards. Nice. All of which are like banned. If your opponent activated a monster effect during your, your main phase one, activate one of these following effects. Draw two cards. Take control of one of your opponent's monsters until the end of the turn. Look at your opponent's hand, choose one card from it and shuffle it into their deck. So we've got like Pot of Greed, uh, Change of Heart and Sentry, all of which are banned spell cards. Wow, Dave, how could they possibly release a card so broken? Well, it's because it relies on your opponent to do a thing. So that's a pretty solid way of balancing a card, at least in theory. But Dave, hand traps are the plague among it. My hero deck! <laughs> but, uh, so now you can punish your opponent for ashing your Rota by, uh, absolutely raffle stopping them with Pot of Greed instead. So, you know what? It's not that bad. Granted, your opponent had to do something to you in the first place, and if they once they see you playing triple tactical titties, they're just gonna not do anything during your main phase in games two and three if they can absolutely avoid it. But hey, in that game one, you're gonna cheese a victory just because you get a good plus two or you steal a boss monster and link it away or whatever the hell you're gonna do with it. Number eight, Lightning Storm. If you control no face-up cards, activate one of these following effects. Damn, these spell cards are all versatile. It's almost like that's good. Destroy all attack position monsters your opponent controls. Destroy all spell and traps your opponent controls. <laughs> wow. We have both Regeki and Harpy's Feather Duster legal in this format. And do you know why? Because we have Lightning Storm in this format. But Dave, Regeki and Harpy's Feather Duster don't have any kind of restrictions. Reeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
it's a one for one anyway, so who cares? You might as well get them with the versatile nuke that does either monsters or spells and traps, which the card's just inherently more versatile being two and one. Number seven, Red Eyes Dark Dragoon. This level eight dark spellcaster with 3k attack and 2500 defense is a phenomenal fusion monster in which you summon with one of the worst fusion cards in the game, Red Eyes Fusion. It's incredibly disrespectful. Or at least you would if you weren't cheesing it out with Verte Anaconda. <laughs> oh, Proto Plants, stop it, man. Stop making, stop breaking the rules. Come on, man. What makes this fusion card worth summoning with one of the dumbest fusion cards we have in the game and running two vanilla bricks in your deck? Dark Magician and Red Eyes Black Dragon? Well, it's got every effect in the world, so let's get started. Cannot be destroyed by card effects. Period. Neither player can target this card with card effects. <laughs> just, in, just in case the first one doesn't stick. During your main phase, you can destroy one monster your opponent controls, and then inflict effect damage to them equal to that monster's original attack power. You can use this effect up to the number of times normal monsters were used as its fusion materials. In most cases, you are summoning it with Red Eyes, Black Dragon, and Dark Magician, so that's, a, that's two free pops. And presumably, a bunch of burn damage. Okay. It could stop there, and the card would be busted. Let's continue. Once per turn, when a card or effect would be activated, you can discard one card, and if you do, negate that activation. <sighs> Destroy that card. And if you do that, this card gains a thousand attack power. Ew, that's permanent. But Dave, you can kaiju it! Yeah, that, and that's about the only way you're getting it off the board, so good luck opening, you know, your 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 side deck game one. The fact that it's got a negate, as well as a bunch of inherent protection, it gets really huge, and then when you manage to not kill it on your turn, it starts obliterating your board. Oh! The card's absolutely fantastic, and being at three is obnoxious. One would be okay. Outing one is a, is a doable task for most decks. Outing three is a, is a stupid. Number six, Eldritch the Golden Lord. Ah, yes. Our great golden king of the north, Eldlich, the Golden Lord, or what he likes to be called now, now that he's actually been printed in maximum gold, uh, Eldlich, the even goldener lord. <laughs> is a level 10 light zombie. Fun typing there. 25 28 attack defense spread. Not bad. You can send this card and one spell or trap from your hand to the graveyard to destroy one card on the field. Wow, a zombie that puts itself in the graveyard. That doesn't seem problematic. If this card's in your graveyard, Oh, what do you know? You can send one spell or trap you control to the graveyard, add this card back to your hand, then you can special summon a zombie from your hand. It, you can just summon himself. <laughs> and it's a hard once per turn, go figure. But Dave, the card advantage! All of his support traps, like dealing card advantage himself, summoning things from the deck and stuff, and then actually floating into the other ones when they're in the graveyard and stuff like that. So they want to be there. It's barely a cost. It, he's basically a one monster engine clearly a zombie monster, and Konami clearly knew that his goldness was was sought after by all the players because he's got printed like twice in one year. <laughs> the year he came out. Konami's been like, they've been, they haven't been holding back on the reprints this year, that's at least a thing. Number five is Axis Code Talker. There's no way you know how this card works, Dave. Shh. Axis Code Talker is a card that I totally get and have played before. It is a... Lick for dark cyber monster with the top left, bottom, and right arrows. In 2300, 2300 attack. That's not great. Made of two plus effect monsters. It's generic and pretty good. The 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 power cross is pretty solid arrows. But what do your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to this card's activation? Period. Ooh, what? That's that's some nasty blanket protection. If this card was Link summoned, you can target one Link monster in your graveyard that was used as material to make this card. This card gains attack equal to that monster's Link rating times a thousand. Wow. So even a Link to boost this thing over 4K. That's uh, that's why he starts off kind of low for a Link four, because <laughs> he's never gonna be that low. You're not making him with four monsters. You are clearly Link climbing into this thing for big number with a Link three, because it's two plus. Cheeky. Lucky guess. 
Also, he has an ignition effect that allows you to banish one Link monster from your field or graveyard to destroy one card your opponent controls. But for the rest of the turn, you can't banish any more monsters that have the same attribute as the thing you paid cost with. All right, methinks that's probably an attempt to balance the effect. I couldn't see why a Cyber's deck would want to be restricted in what they can banish, because they're a Link climby deck. I could assume, at least, that they're banishing things to summon other things to... Uh... You don't know how cybers work, do you? Go on, Dave. Tell them how to play salads. Shut up! Balancing aside an ignition effect to destroy one card in the field is still a solid effect in Yu-Gi-Oh, especially when your opponent can't really respond to it. And the fact this thing gets absolutely huge means, uh... You're probably just gonna uh, pop something and then uh, cram into your opponent's life points probably for game if you have any kind of real board. So yeah, this thing is definitely a great way to push for the old game arenas. See? I can read... Number four. Ugh, oh, it's an XC monster. Thank god, I know how to play those. Divine Arsenal, Double A Zeus, Sky Thunder. This giant Gunpla mecha anime Gundam thing is a rank 12 with 3k attack and defense. Light machine, if it matters any. What's really strange is that uh, the 3k attack and defense is pretty big, but it's not big number just yet. So the fact that it is a rank 12 is uh, a bit suspicious. Hmm, the effect must be good. I promise you, you're not making this with two level 12 monsters. Once per turn, if an XC monster you control battled this turn, you can also summon this card using one XC monster you control as material. Its material gets stuck to this thing. What's even interesting about that effect is it doesn't need to be the XC monster that actually battled. It's just gotta be one of your XC monsters did some fight in this turn. In before Melfi's best deck, because Joyous Melfi uh, can attack directly. <laughs> Imagine the look on your opponent's face when your little cute rabbits transform into a giant death machine. His biggest downside is you can only do this, obviously, during your main phase two, so you can't put his 3k body to good use, at least this turn. But the fact that it has a particularly easy summoning condition means it's, hey, you can at least turn your small rank twos into a big boy for, frankly, a pretty easy condition. But uh, I feel like we're missing, a, we're missing something here. What is it? Quick effect. Do you hear it? Casual Yu-Gi-Oh player potato hand man. I don't have any ears. It's a quick effect. I have a feeling about this. Detach two materials from this card, send all other cards on the field to the graveyard. <laughs> that doesn't target, that doesn't destroy. Yeah, last time I checked, uh, Quick Effect Dark Hole is a, is a pretty solid thing on a particularly easily summonable monster that most decks could probably run. Oh, but, uh, oh, okay, Dave, you're, you're probably not gonna, you only get one use out of him, right? Well, I mean, maybe. Once per turn, if another card you control is destroyed by battle or by your opponent's card effect, you can attach one card from your hand, deck, or extra deck to this card. That is a really, really, really strange ability. Uh, it allows you, obviously, to refill its material, so hopefully you can use its effect more than once. But the fact that it attaches directly from your deck or your extra deck means that you can actually cheese out weird things like arc light from your extra deck, or something from your main deck that has some sort of graveyard ability that you're gonna stick under this thing and when this thing eventually is removed from the field if your opponent hasn't just lost already, you're gonna get some sort of floating effect. I really like grabbing arc light out of your extra deck and sticking it under this thing for later so that you can get the search off if you're like playing rituals or something. I think that's really fun. Let you mitigate some advantage kind of neat. Overall, this is just a fantastic card. I don't think it's broken. I just think it's really well designed and very powerful. I like it. Number three, it's Green Snake. Oh, see, you thought I was just gonna mention Dragoon and caught. No, I, this thing's stupid. But my pet of plants! Yeah, um, it seems like if you have a card that allows you to cheat, it's uh, really good in this game. I go figure. Link two. Two effect monsters, really? They're not even trying. You can target one face of monster in the field, it becomes a dark this turn. <laughs> oh wow, that's so bro- I'm kidding. I bet you forgot it even did that. F***ing idiot. You could pay 2,000 life points to send one fusion or polymerization normal or quick play spell card from your deck to the graveyard. This card's effect becomes that card's effect when that card would be activated. Also, you cannot special summon for the rest of the turns after this thingies. 
You can only use its effect once per turn. Okay, I actually read that in my head differently than it actually says. By letter of the card, you can pay 2,000 light points, send one fusion or polymerization normal or quick play spell card from your deck to the graveyard, semicolon, that's your cost. This effect becomes that spell's effect when that card is activated. In recording this video, I reread the card and I was like, wait, wait, what? I think it's missing the word when that card would be activated because th what it's trying to tell you is this thing's effect becomes the effect of the fusion you, you spell that you sent to the graveyard. And then it is fusion summon something using the card's effect that you sent. So if you send super polymerization, you then do a super poly type fusion summon off of this thing. Me and Ryan just had a fun discussion about this in the middle of recording. <laughs> Not all problem solving card text is good. Didn't you just make a video about this? Oh, say, casual potato player, I, I totally did. Right there. <laughs> Obviously the advantage of this thing is it basically lets you cherry pick any fusion spell out of your deck and if you're running Red Eyes Fusion that means you, any deck that can put two effect monster on boards can now do the Dragoons. Wow, that's uh, stupid. Am I gonna ban this thing or what? Number two, Link Cross. Here we go. At least this thing got hit because, you know, broken cards probably should be. This Link 1 monster is made of one Link 2 or higher Link monster. Ooh, that's a weird summoning condition. And it's only got a down arrow. Huh, 900 attack. <laughs> Devastating blow. If this card is Link Summoned, you can activate this effect. Special Summon 2 Link tokens. Level 1, zero, zero, Light Cybers up to the link rating of the monster you use to make this thing. Most of the time you're making this with a link two or three, so you're getting two or three tokens. Also, you can't use link tokens for a link summon, ironically, at least for the rest of the turn. So next turn, if your tokens survive, you can link a summon all you want. Or if you summon this during your, your opponent's turn somehow, you'll be good, kind of a la scapegoat. That's not how people are using it though. Now people are using those things to go into like arc lights and, and that metal marcher guy, and they're just, you know, turning them into something that they can continue link climbing with, as you know, as you do. Telling a Yu-Gi-Oh player, hey, you can't use all that free advantage for one particular extra deck summon is just going to make them say, hmm, how can I absolutely do an end run around that? Not, okay, I guess I won't. <laughs> if it can be broke, it shall be. Give yourself a recurring tuner and you can synchro summon a bunch of stupid stuff and it's basically free. No offense, but I think it's kind of gross. It also lets you mitigate some advantage that you uh, lost by literally reducing your link rating to make the thing. Nice. Nice. It's just a stupid combo extender. And uh, Halka for Bra- Halky Fried Brax. Needle Fiber. That's not its name anymore. Well, I can't pronounce its real name because it's a made up freaking word. It, it combos real well with with, uh, with Needle Fiber because the idea is that you probably made Halka for Brax with a tuner and that tuner is going to recur itself from the grave and do shit with the tokens. Broken. Shoken. See, I know how to wombo combo. Pfft. Don't believe those goblins that Ryan sent. Tell me. Dave only knows how to place. Fossil Dino Moon Mirror Shield Turbo. <laughs> That's not true. I play Tiny Turtle Turbo. It's entirely a different strategy. All right, we have honorable mentions, but no dishonorable mentions because the dishonorable mentions would go on the next list. So what's our honorable mention? Magician's Souls. Magician's Souls is, uh, is, is a good card. Not Magician's Soul, it's Magician's Soul. Plural, possessive, fancy. What? You can send up to two spell or trap cards from your hand or field to the graveyard to draw that many cards. <laughs> You're not gonna do that. <laughs> Does anyone even use that effect? I do! On your own eternal soul. <laughs> no, we actually care about the other effect, really. If this card is in your hand, you can send one level six or higher spellcaster monster from your deck to the graveyard, special summon this card. Or I guess you could use the other effect is that you can, instead of summoning this card, you could summon a dark magician or dark magician girl from your graveyard and put this thing in your graveyard. Would you believe I forgot it did that? <laughs> the card really should say, uh, you could send one spiral master plan from your deck to the graveyard to combo off. But the dark magicians! Spirals use your card better. I don't know why I would do that. I know what's been in this thing's mouth. The fact that this lets you dump any level six or higher spellcaster monster was probably a drastic oversight by Konami. I guess they were like, you know what? The Dark Magician's like 
Kind of not a real archetype, kind of. So in order to try to accommodate the fact that half of Dark Magician's retrains and shit are all named God knows what, oh, we'll just, uh, we'll just make this super generic. No, stop it. I guess because you can't say once per turn you could send a card that vaguely looks like Dark Magician from your deck to the graveyard. <laughs> Although I would love to see that ruling nightmare. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. If you guys want to help support the channel, check out my links down in the description below. I've got links to the Discord, Facebook, and Patreon if you want to get in touch with me, help with the lists, things like that. Or if you want to save some money, you can head over to Metamat's website, use my code TROLLMETA at checkout. You can save 10% off a custom cloth playmat like one of these bad boys. Or if you want to waste your money on expensive cardboard, use my TCG player link in the description below and put off your financial obligations. All right, are you guys ready for the number one card on 2020? It's, it's Halkafabrax. This Link 2 monster with, uh, arrows is made of two monsters, including a tuner. I wonder what tuners you'd use for this thing. At least you would if this card didn't get them all banned. If this card is Link summoned, you can special summon one level three or lower tuner monster from your hand or deck in defense position. It just replaces the tuner you made it with. That's, that is so good. But it can't activate its effects this turn. You don't care. During your opponent's main phase or battle phase quick effect, you can banish this card you control to special summon a synchro monster from your extra deck to the field. This is treated as a synchro summon. The synchro summon monster needs to be a synchro tuner monster. That's a restriction, I guess. I guess you're making, what, Wonder Magician or that Locust thing or whatever. You know, this isn't even the primary use of the card, because half the time you're just linking this away right after you make it, and you're teasing things out of your deck that are, like, good tuners that can recur themselves from the graveyard, or you're making it with a tuner that can recur itself from the graveyard, meaning that you're just setting yourself up for all the wombo combo, either this turn or next. No wonder people think that this card should be banned, because it's really strong and instead konami decided to ban all of our good tuners around the card uh because i guess because we haven't had any like real ycs's or anything since this card was released so i think maybe they're like uh we we don't want to ban it until like there's an, a real tournament so all the people that bought all the packs to get this card at least can use their card in an official capacity at least once that is the only reason why i think uh we we still have this card because <laughs> They held off on giving it to us for like a year and a half to almost two years or whatever it was. So clearly they understand the card's annoying and a problem. So they're like, uh, we just won't give it to you. Oh, well, thank God the whole world shut down. Now we can release a card and it's not a problem. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly did. Fun fact, I uh, this was decided on the spot. I can't wait for the comments about this thing. So let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And remember, guys, if you don't troll the meta, who will? See you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Well, looks like they made it through the video, but you'd still be a slacker if you didn't subscribe up there. Maybe you should check out one of these other videos. Maybe then you'd actually be a decent opponent for me.